Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Y'all, um, please give him a hand and their team a hand. And definitely Hudson. Y'all, 80 lunches? Oh my God, please send him a referral today for that because that is huge. I never always have to go, well, who's coming? You know, from lenders, I don't know. I don't do business with them. <laughs> So thank you so much. That means the world. Um, I'm Jenny Williams, and I'm so happy to be here with y'all today. Um, I have so many business partners in the crowd here that um, I just love so much. So um, happy to meet everyone else that um, is not a, a part of our crew, and uh, we welcome you and are so happy that you're here. I'm going to be talking fast because I want y'all to leave today with a ton of nuggets. Does that sound okay? All right, <laughs> so uh, I'm not um, a Southern Belle that talks real slow, y'all. <laughs> I will throw out a lot of y'alls, and I, you could hear some other things you may not want to hear, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that once I get going. But what you will learn today, or what you will get out of today, um, uh, before you leave, is we're going to talk about how to build a thriving business, and that means something different to every single person, right? You've got a definition that's going to be different from your definition. Um, I'm going to ask you questions and we're going to go deep on that. And then we're going to talk about fun methods that will actually produce instant business. Does that sound okay to y'all? Yes. All right, so how am I going to give you ideas like this? Like what? <laughs> Why would you even listen to me on this? So I've been doing this for 26 years, but y'all, people can have their license for 26 years and not sell crap, right? <laughs> the person who says I've been doing this for 26 years is probably the one doing it wrong for 26 years if they have to remind you. <laughs> um, but uh, I jumped back into sales four years ago. I had not sold a house in 10 years because I was coaching one-on-one -on -one top producing real estate agents and doing all of their marketing for them. So um, I had over 100 top producers um, in Birmingham and uh, surrounding areas and some in a couple other states. And y'all, I kept those agents as clients for over 10 years. So um, I think I kind of figured some things out. What my magic is, um, what I bring to the table is I figure out what you will actually do that fits your personality. Because you can make money in real estate in so many different ways, right? There are so many different ways. So I'm gonna give you things today that uh, you've gotta say, that ain't me, I'm never gonna do that. <laughs> and be honest with yourself, right? And then say, wait a minute, I will do that. That's something I can do and I'll be committed to doing because um, what you will do, right, what you will commit to do is the only thing that you're going to see results from. We can talk about real estate all day long. I would love to talk about real estate all day long, but I want you out there actually doing it and seeing results so that your pocketbook, your checkbook, your lifestyle changes because of the results because that's why we're here today because we're going to segment it into retirement. Um, so, and that's a big leap, right? So I want to talk to you about building that business that you're super proud of, that's thriving, having fun ways to, to get instant business, and then talk about, hey, how am I going to be able to retire one day? <clears throat> because we don't usually talk about that with real estate agents. <laughs> because nobody ever retires. <laughs> so, and the other two things that I wanna to talk to you about is how to attract your ideal client. Um, some of you right now um, may not want to be prospecting at all because you keep picking up duds. And you're like, I don't wanna do this business. So you don't wanna make that next phone call. You don't wanna have that next conversation. You wanna ask that next person because you're like, this is a nightmare. This is not what I want. A listing, oh great, it's $25,000, it has three liens on it. Oh good, you've got an IRS tax lien too. Okay, yay, I can't wait, I'm so excited. <laughs> so um, we're gonna get clear about who your ideal is and what gets you excited so you will do the things it takes because most of us know what to do in real estate, right? Most of us, okay, we pretty much know we've got to find buyers and sellers and help them to the closing table. But you came here today because you're trying to figure out what you will do. Maybe there's some ideas that will click with you. I was with an agent yesterday and we were talking about her database. Do you know how many conversations we've had about her database over the past three years that we've been in business together? <clears throat> at least 25. <laughs> hey, have you got your database together yet? No, I'm still working on it. <laughs> You're never going to finish it. <laughs> I promise. 
I can coach real estate agents on a high level. I know what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And the reason she's not going to do it is because she had a listing um, last weekend that um, she had multiple offers on it, went over list price. Um, she knew the lender. The lender gave an approval letter. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, I really shouldn't have given them an approval letter after ever, all the smoke clear and the traction died on that property. And so it makes you want to quit, right? How many times have you been through that kind of stuff? Makes you want to quit. You are not going to say, okay, who's in my database after that? <laughs> so this is what I suggested that she do. I said, okay, let's clear everything out and stop talking about more business right now because you are haunted by that situation. You're playing it over in your head about how you could have prevented it, what went wrong, the, what the clients are saying. You're feeling like you're responsible for it. It's going to hold you back from doing anything else. Have you had this happen before? Some kind of instance. Right. Haunts you. So I said, throw everything else out. All the to-dos. Just let's get rid of those. Let's start with a document that says, these are all of the things that can go wrong, that can disappoint you in our transaction together. Let's put that together right now. Let's start naming those. And she was like, yeah, that's exactly it. Because I feel like I did something wrong in this situation and I don't want to go get more business. So with the market changing a little bit, you may be feeling like you're doing something wrong in the situation. And I can tell you, this is your time to shine. This is your time to thrive because anytime there is a change in the market, it is opportunity for you because not everybody's going to be able to handle it. Not everybody's going to be able to hack it. We got to go to work now. And the past couple of years, it's been super easy. But I can tell you, in 2008, 2009, I had many conversations going, okay, Tiffany, if you turn the keys back into the bank on that minivan, then I think you'll be able to keep your house for another couple of months. And during those other couple of months, we'll be able to get enough prospects pending to hopefully the bank will be satisfied. Many of those conversations, okay? We are not in that situation right now. That's the good news. The good news is rates are still really good. We just have to ask more people if they are ready to sell their house than we have before because they've been calling you. Now, the things I'm going to share with you today will actually have people calling you. Who would prefer people call you with business? Y'all, that's me. Y'all are my people. I'm not calling anybody. I don't want to call anybody. And let me just tell you, four years ago when I stepped back into um, selling real estate, <clears throat> after not having sold a house in 10 years, um, I had been in, uh, in behind the scenes for thousands of transactions during that time, but I had not personally sold one. Not even one that um, my husband, y'all, he's the key one in the dimples back there. Um, <laughs> not even one of his houses um, that he built I had not had a part of the flips or built. Um, me personally, so, and I knew everybody was like, oh yeah, yeah, she can, she can uh, tell people how to sell real estate, but let's watch her fail, right? That's how I felt, and so I was driving, I've got to sell as much as I can. So I went and looked at my database, my own database, because that's what I tell everybody else to do, right? Go to your database first. I had given away all of my past clients to all the other agents. I couldn't be a jerk and just like, okay, Denise, <laughs> I know I gave you those people, but I need them back, girl. I need to eat, right? So I had to go find new people. Like when I looked at my sphere of influence, I only had like 48 people. And uh, I, I already know that you can't make the money you need to make with a database of 48 people. How many people do we need in a database to make six figures? Carter, 150, right? Because, all right, let's break it down. Let's get that definition of a thriving business, right? So what is a thriving business to you? How much? Six figures. Six figures? All right, so six figures. And then some of you have been at six figures. You want to go up. How many sales does it take to make six figures? With an average sales price of $250,000, we are talking about 16 sales. Can you do it? Come on. It's not even two per month. I know you can do that. If you have to get two sales per month, how many appointments, new client appointments, does, do you have to go on? Well, that depends on if you suck or if you're good. <laughs> but the thing is, is you can still get your two if you suck. 
That's the beauty of it. You just have to go on more appointments. It's really not hard. It's super easy. So um, knowing that I had to have 150 people in my database to produce 30 sales, right? That's more. So if you've got an average sales price of 150,000, like let's just say, oh sure, I don't sell fancy houses, Jenny, that 250. I'm over in the 150 mark. Well, okay, you got, you know, that 30 houses will do it. And guess what? It's still 150 people in your sphere of influence that know you. Don't put people like, oh yeah, I got them off realtor.com like five years ago. I've never talked to them once and they're my sphere of influence. That's not gonna work. I don't want to disappoint you. Let's disappoint you now. Let's really focus on things that are going to work. They know who you are, you know who they are. And I actually like to separate my husbands and my wives and make them count uh, separately. So I just made your job a whole lot easier. You know why? Because the husband has 150 people that he knows, the wife has 150 people that she knows. And if I can communicate to them on a regular basis over and over, then they're going to remember me in their sphere of influence. If I treat them like a couple, who's going to answer all of that stuff? The wife. The wife. She's going to read the emails and the cards and the gifts and everything else, right? Like, I want to include him too. Y'all, I feel sorry for men out there. They get excluded on everything. I mean, they don't even get to read my marketing emails. So <laughs> I don't want to leave them out. <laughs> so um, if you want to make more than $100,000 per year, right? Let's say you want to make two, then how many need to be in your database? Carter, you got the first one right. Oh, my God, you're so good already. <laughs> You're winning. <laughs> so the thing is, is taking the time to do that. So having 48 people in my sphere of influence, and I'm hoping, are you getting nuggets already? Yeah. Okay, because I'm going to keep asking you, right? I need to know. I need to make sure you leave here with good stuff today or you're not allowed to go. Um, uh, and we'll lock the door. <laughs> so um, with 48 people, I'm like, okay, what do I do? Like, I'm in a panic. I know I'm in, which actually panic and sense of urgency mode will make you a better salesperson, no matter what. I don't care if it is presenting an offer. I don't care if it's the language that you speak with when you go to take a listing. That sense of urgency is what people actually want, even though they might feel like it's this. They would much rather hire somebody with a sense of urgency than somebody going, we'll get to it. Oh, it's no problem at all. We'll get to it. Hey, we'll get to it. <laughs> no, you won't, because I already hired the other person who said they were doing it now. <laughs> So um, just remember that when you're having conversations. So I went, the first thing I did, and y'all, what I, the first thing I did was fire everybody in my Get A Real Estate Life um, team except Zach and said, Zach, you're getting your real estate license and we're joining this company and we're going back into sales. And he was like, what? Okay. Now he'll tell you about his success story a little bit later. I'll pick on him then. But um, he knew that I didn't have enough people in my database. Went through my Facebook friends. First step, if you're stuck with anything, went through my Facebook friends and I'm like, who do I, who am I friends with that I don't even know? <laughs> and I started going through going, okay, that's one, that's one, that's one, that's one, that one. And I just start, started messaging them on Facebook. Hey, we're, we're always talking um, and liking each other's posts. And I, I just realized I don't have a clue of who you are and I'm just starting back in real estate again. And can I just like really meet you? Can we have coffee? Okay, that very first coffee meeting um, led to a $1.4 million listing and a million dollar sale. Wow. Was that hard? Was it hard? Yes. Could you do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, easy. So there's where you fill in the gaps of who's missing and who I need to replace. The next thing I did is I got, <laughs> you're going to love this, and the, they did not put me up to this. The next thing I did was got a list of the chamber members. I joined the chamber. <laughs> And I attended the meetings, and I got to meet all the small business owners. Um, and you see that guy back there in the red? Yay! <laughs> That's Philip. So um, Philip actually goes with me to interview small business owners, and uh, we have a group called Life Along 280 in Chelsea. And uh, y'all, I kind of suck at it. I could, could do so much better. We've got a little over 2,000 people in there of people that actually live in the area that I want to do, but um, that I want to work. But Philip actually records um, the videos on the small business people that normally I've met at the chamber or go to their businesses. And why would I want to do that? I do want to highlight their business, but yes, I want to meet them. 
I want to show off their um, uh, goods and services to my sphere of influence and to the people in the surrounding area, and I want their audience. I want their audience. I mean, it's really difficult for um, a business person, a realtor to, on their professional business page to have a whole lot of likes, right? <laughs> because, oh my God, if I'm gonna like yours, I'm gonna like all the 800 other people I know, right? But you have a local ice cream shop and they're like 15,000. <laughs> So whenever you do a video about them, promoting them, then tagging them in it, you're going to get into their audience. Now it's kind of like you're endorsing them, but you kind of get a backhanded endorsement to you. That is one of the things that you can do to get instance business.